Hi, this is Nathan Oxenfeld with Integral Eyesight Improvement in Asheville, North Carolina. I'm sitting outside today. It's a beautiful, bright, sunny day, which is perfect for what we'll be talking about, which is the sun and how light affects sight. Your eyes are, are the only organs in your body constituted to receive light. It's the only point on the body where light can enter inside your body. The back of your eye is covered in photoreceptor cells or light sensitive cells, your rods and your cones, and they depend on light stimulation to work. Light is sort of like food for your eyes. Your eyes feed on light and if they don't get enough light then they begin to not function as properly. And that sort of refers to the idea that Dr. John Ott had when he coined the term malillumination or the idea that Many people in industrialized societies do not get enough full-spectrum sunlight in through their eyes. And so what we're talking about today is exploring ways to, to start getting enough sunlight in a very gentle and harmless way in order to stimulate your eyes, the photoreceptor cells in your retina, and to just sharpen up the clarity of your eyesight in general. And ideally the goal would be for you to be able to be outside on a bright sunny day like today without sunglasses, without squinting, or without straining. Now if you are light sensitive and without sunglasses you squint your eyes or you're straining or you've got eye strain then it'd probably be better for you to wear the sunglasses until you start to uh, get better at taking in more light. There's really no rush to reintroduce yourself to the light. But ideally, um, you'll be able to be outside in a very relaxed way, no matter how bright it is. Now, instead of sunglasses, you can always just wear a hat because then you're covering up your eyes, you're getting shade on your eyes, but the indirect light is still reflecting off of objects and can enter your eyes. And so sunglasses, prescription glasses, and contact lenses all block, most of them all block UV light. And that's really going to take a toll on your visual system after years of not getting enough light. So I'll just demonstrate a very, very simple way to take in more light. Um, it's from the Bates method, um, which was developed by Dr. William Bates before uh, a lot of the misconceptions and misunderstandings about the sun became popular and mainstream. It's called sunning, and although it's a part of the Bates method, it's been around for a lot longer than a hundred years. Um, it's probably something that we just, you know, as humans naturally do because our eyes evolved, have evolved under full spectrum sunlight over millions of years, and it's only in the past. Uh, half a century that we've really, you know, distanced ourselves from the sun. And, you know, we've got, humans have much, many more than just the five senses. Um, we, we can pick up on, you know, we've got these internal rhythms and uh, clocks, sort of, that um, help us determine day, night, light, dark, activity, rest, awake, sleep, and the sun kind of sets that for us. It sets our clock and it winds your clock. And so if your clock gets, you know, out of whack or if you don't wind your clock enough, it's going to stop ticking. <laughs> and so sunning is a great way to wind your clock and just sort of reset your circadian rhythms um, and really just create more of a natural pattern of, of your day. So. What you want to do is go outside um, without your any glasses or sunglasses and you're going to face the sun and you're just going to close both of your eyes and pivot your head side to side, left to right, enough so that one eye gets shaded from the sun while the other one gets closer to the sun and then the opposite happens. Your other eye gets shaded by your nose and your other eyes closer to the sun. So just back and forth and just breathe deeply. So you're not looking at the sun, 
you know, I never recommend that anybody looks directly at the sun or stare at the sun. Our eyes are closed and we're, we've got constant motion, so the sun is never stimulating the same point for more than just a moment. And our eyelids are the thinnest skin on the human body, so we're still getting indirect light through the eyelids, so we're still stimulating the photoreceptor cells. We're also, I mean, the, just the warmth and the light from the sun is very relaxing, so it, it just automatically relaxes all the six muscles around each eye. Really all the muscles in your face and tendons and nerves are going to let go and relax pretty quickly. Especially if you breathe nice and deep and rhythmically. There's even more going on right now though because as one eye gets closer to the sun that pupil constricts and the other one is in the shade and so it, the pupil dilates. The opposite happens when you turn, the opposite pupil constricts, and then the other one dilates. So going back and forth, you're sort of training your involuntary muscles inside your eye to respond to different light levels more efficiently. And even just doing this for a minute, just a few minutes, is going to be enough to already set in a really nice feeling of relaxation. Um, when you open your eyes back up, you want to, well actually it's best to follow any type of sunning with palming. You palm both of your eyes. I've got a video instructing about palming. So that's a really good practice to always follow your sunning with palming because your eyes r sort of work by contrast. So it's good to go from the bright light to the darkness and allow your eyes to adjust. So after you palm for about the same amount of time that you sunned, you want to keep your eyes closed as you come out of the palming because both of your pupils will dilate and you don't want to blast yourself with light. So you, ge you gently remove both palms from your eyes, keeping your eyes closed, and then just pivot side to side a few times. And you can even turn away from the sun and look into the dark, you know, any shadow or dark area and gently open your eyes. And after sunning, if you thought it looked bright before sunning, chances are everything is going to be a lot easier to look at. And just in general, a good tip for being outside in the sun, if it is very bright, is to just let your eyes look at the shadows. Look at dark, um, absorbent objects instead of bright, shiny, white objects that just reflect the light back into your eye. Look at, you know the grass or any any shadows and that'll be a lot easier for your eyes um, that and wearing a hat can help a, a lot as well um, yeah and you always just want to let comfort be your guide whenever you do sunning um, I usually just let nature determine when I do my sunning if it's a if it's a beautiful day I'll step outside in the sun if it's cloudy um, or overcast or poor weather I'll just not do my sunning that day um, and like I said, it doesn't take very much at all to, abs to absorb all the benefits. And so that's another good rule to follow with sunning is it's better to do a little bit often or frequently as opposed to a whole bunch all at once. And so I hope that this was informative to maybe challenge some um, ideas that you have about sun. And you know, just try it out, and if it feels good for you, then feel free to, to keep doing it. If it doesn't feel comfortable or, or good, then there's no need to do it. However, I do hope that this uh, helps more people get reconnected with the sun and create a better relationship with it, because it can be very beneficial and improve our overall health if we treat it with respect and don't overdo it. So thanks so much and happy sunning.